Hello, I'm Heather Haywood, the Head of the Information Management Service at ITU, and I'm very honoured today to be speaking with two very distinguished historians, Dr. Uh, Gabrielle Balbi and Dr. Andreas Vickers. The reason that we invited you to speak with us today is that the two of you co-edited a book that was published last year in June 2020 titled History of the International Telecommunication Union, Transnational Techno Diplomacy from the Telegraph to the Internet. Can you tell us a bit about the book? What was your inspiration for the book and how you came to work on it together? This is a book about international and transnational communications and the ITU was the first organization ever and still uh, plays a crucial role in managing global communication today. We also try to have a global perspective with chapters uh, on the United States, on Europe, but also on Africa and Asia. So sometimes those are regions that are not so uh, much considered. I think this is really important to embed our book into this tradition of, of looking at technological infrastructures, communication technologies in a long term historical perspective and to see how non-state actors like the ITU played really a key role in making that uh, transnational uh, Europe possible that we know today. What we see is right from the start of the ITU that people from different backgrounds, with different expertises, with different also disciplinary traditions and expectations, come together at ITU conferences and have to negotiate yeah, new standards, have to negotiate prices, have to negotiate uh, institutional rules and, 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 and regulations. And hereby we see that yeah, technicians, technical experts, some how become also diplomats and diplomats need to learn the language of the technical experts in order to understand each other. And this interesting mixture in this international arena, which is the ITU, uh, is for us a perfect example of what we call techno uh, diplomacy. It's about democracy, it's about globalization, it's about accessibility. Uh, so these are all questions that are at the very heart of ITU negotiations. For us historians engaging with these uh, topics means that we try to uh, raise our voice as historians and say we, we have a say when it comes to uh, yeah, such big questions as uh, yeah, the right to communicate versus the right to monitor, for example. Why uh, look into the archives? To me, I really like the idea of finding the, the lives of people of the past, uh, finding alternative ideas of communication, for example, ways of looking at forms of communication among humans that even today are surprising, are stunning. A communication history is not a linear process. So if you look at the past, you see also these roots that go in, in different directions. And very often uh, we face also the problem of not having access to uh, the sources. So in this sense, I really want to take uh, the opportunity of, of thanking and congratulating the ITU of doing such an effort in digitizing uh, their collections and making them uh, openly accessible, which is absolutely not uh, the case with most of especially private uh, uh, archives. So I think really ITU is doing a fantastic job uh, in, in making this heritage accessible and usable for uh, research and the book that we wrote has uh, profited largely from uh, this online availability of sources. So thank you for, yeah, for doing such a good job. The RTU has been living through, let's say, the, the age of of high imperialism, colonialism, of uh, uh, the nationalism uh, leading to world wars. And in all of these uh, times, questions of, of free communication, of the right to exchange information and to uh, speak has been under threat. And the ITU from the very beginning has learned how to deal with that 
So I think really the ITU uh, has uh, to a certain degree paved the way for a new uh, kind of dealing with technical uh, issues which have become center stage for uh, modern societies. It's more and more important today, more and more relevant, the role of the ITU as a neutral uh, institution, a neutral international organization. There is a need for a, uh, what the Latins call the super partners association, uh, more now than, than ever, I think. Again, looking at the past, uh, why the ITU had such a, a relevant role? Because it was a key place, what we call an arena. In the book, we say that ITU was an actor, an arena, and an antenna. And being an arena, so the place, the hub, we could say today, where the negotiations are, are made, uh, negotiations on regulatory regimes, as we said before, uh, physical space, but also virtual uh, place. Think about the correspondence or the journal telegraphic that I mentioned before, where people could exchange opinion. Uh, this could be something uh, to be preserved by the ITU, according to me. So being a, always a kind of arena where discussions can be taken, a relevant place uh, where you look at for having recommendations in terms of standards. Then also the antenna thing is important. Um, the ITU was, uh, has been able in the past to pick up uh, uh, ideas and to bring these ideas to the international discussion. Uh, this is something more and more difficult, but it should be done uh, even today. Uh, being, a, for example, at the forefront of the research, today is something that we tend to think is preserved to big private companies. They have big research and development departments and they have to do it because they have the money to do it. I don't think it's the only place where you can find contemporary research, but for example, in these international organizations like the ITU, you can also find places where relevant, important technicians can discuss about the future of innovation. What I think is, is important in the geopolitical uh, perspective that, uh, and also in the antenna function that uh, uh, Gabriele was mentioning, is to give uh, um, also countries, players, actors um, a forum, a, a sounding board that come from the, the global south, for example. Uh, so really ITU from its statutes has a philosophy of uh, kind of egalitarian uh, voice, uh, giving one voice to, to one country. And uh, so here the United States have the same kind of power as uh, a very small country uh, like uh, Belgium, for example, or uh, some other country from Africa or Latin America. And I think this is really important. Uh, this is a huge difference to other uh, more industry driven uh, uh, institutions. And uh, that's what I hope will remain uh, a key uh, role of the ITU, to be that sounding board uh, in a more democratic uh, and egalitarian view on how to, how to rule, how to regulate uh, global communications. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us today and for sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you.